What is up nerds, Cloud here with another Honkai Star Rail video. And in today's video, I wanted to go over the three five stars that I'm going for when the game releases. So just in preparation of the height, these are the characters that either I got during the CBT I was allowed to play, or the one that got away. So, I'm incredibly excited for this game, looking forward to making content for it. So, if you stick around and you enjoy the video, I know a bunch of other content creators have talked about this information before. But you haven't heard it from someone with this many tattoos, which that is a huge exaggeration and by no means an accurate statement. But maybe give us a follow, subscribe to the channel, check us out on stream whenever we uh, go live with the game. So in order, I want to talk about the characters that I'm going for. So number three for me personally is going to be Branya. So Branya was a character that I got off of the after 50 summons. You pity a character. She was my five star at pity. My initial reaction was kind of disappointed because I wanted a damage dealer or a farmer. And when I saw Branya first, I was like, man, I just really don't see a support character being a good to start with. Because a lot of early game, they should be throwing characters out at us that fit the description of clearing content. However, oh, also real quick, she has a musket for some unexplained reason. Like everyone has this future advanced weapons and technology, even the planet she's from. Black, are you dumb? Are you getting rude to man? <laughs> That's what you get, fam. Push you. Yeah, Black. However, she's rocking a musket from World War II. So in any case, after further inspection, though, I took Branya off my team and there was a significant gap in the content I could beat. So... Branya fits the description for what I need. She's the best support, hands down, in terms of what I saw. Not a healer, but a support. So going over her skills first, her single target damage dealing ability, it's just her regular attack, isn't a huge stretch of a cool ability. However, it does have access to 100% crit rate, which is niche, it's cool, but it doesn't really help anything aside from providing wind damage. Now her skill, Combat Redeployment, is where she starts to shine, right? She dispels a debuff from a single ally and advances them forward their actions by 100% and increases their damage again based on what level you have her, her uh, Eidolons at. Taking a debuff away and progressing them 100%. On the screen you should see some debuffs that you as the character can put onto the enemy. However, Wind Shear, Frost, Burn, these ailments you can cleanse and bring them forward so if you're damage dealer or your healer right so if you have two skills you can use Branya to advance a character and then natasha can heal or sile can heal uh can attack so it's that's again half of her kit when i say half of her kit it's it's that the second part of her kit the bellabog march is her ultimate so and this is you want to pop this off right before you do some big damage but it increases the attack of all allies, again, based on the skill level, and increases their crit rate equal to, depending on the skill level, of Branya's crit damage plus for two turns. So she can, just a spoiler, Branya can buff before you get into the fight, and then during the fight, her ultimate buffs attack again on top of bringing her crit damage. Uh, based on her crit damage, she gives everyone crit damage up almost doubled. It just depends on what level you have her uh, Eidolons at, but nonetheless, access to almost 25% increased crit damage for an ultimate is incredible. It does look like the it does look like it progresses them their combat readiness up, but it does not. However, it does huge damage multipliers for everyone. One of her talents is after using a basic attack, her next action will be forwarded by again, depending on the level, 15%. So. She has access to almost getting a 25% close to above, lapping another character. For uh, for in her perspective on the team is to rush your characters forward, right? To cleanse those debuffs, to let your healer heal, to let your damage dealer attack, or to let your tank uh, re-provoke. Her technique, which is what she uses before she gets into battle, is the banner of command. Pops that flag down, and everyone gets super gassed up. Everyone's damage increases by 50% for two turns. So. And the fact that we can stack these techniques on top of each other, anytime she's on your team, there's no reason not to unless you need to heal. If you're gonna use a damage dealer, you're gonna buff with her, with Branya first, and then go into attack. Uh, Branya's traces, again, I talked about it, 100% crit rate, that's cool. 
Um, but at the beginning of battle, she increases all allies defense by 20%. So you could increase damage by 15, increase defense automatically for two turns when you come in. She could increase the attack again and then attack damage. You know, I'm sorry, crit damage. So like it, it goes crazy. And then uh, at A6, her major trace is when Bronn is on the field, all allies deal 10% more damage. There's no skill for how, how long this lasts for or how many turns it lasts for. Incredible. She does get access to more wind damage for the minor traces, but it's not something that's like super significant. It's going to change it. I'll change her playstyle. Um, her Eidolons, uh, honestly, the more copies you get, the better, regardless of what character it is. However, for a five star base, they're going to be a little bit harder to come by. Not unless they give us access to a like a freebie to be able to level up a character's um, Eidolon. But regardless, hers are good, but none of them are required to take her... Uh, like She's not like locked out of an ability or skill. They just do more damage. And then her Eidolon level 2, uh, after you target an ally, Branya's skill uh, takes action. Their speed increases. So you're talking... A speed demon, along with Branya doing 50% uh, rushing forward, now the character that you buffed up. So that's who I'm going to go with for number three. Again, if I get her on the starter banner like I did before, then God has chosen correctly because that's who I'm rocking with because she's rocking with us. The second character, uh, the five star that I'm going for, is well, a lot. Again, I'm sure everyone's talking about it, but Jingyun. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that one half right. But I did not get him on the summonings. I did try to summon for him, and I felt short. So I'm really, I'm really excited to go for it. One of the biggest things I like about his character is I've transitioned from loving fire characters to now loving thunder characters. So him as a character, he also has this like momentum throw. So when he does his normal attack, like it's like the spear that he's using is like heavy. So you feel the, uh, you know, like the strike. Um, but regardless, getting into his skills. He deals lightning damage to a single enemy, depending on the skill level. His skill, though, deals lightning damage equal to, depending on, uh, Jingyun's attack to all enemies and increases Lightning Lord's attack count by two for the next turn. So, Lightning Lord, when you go into battle, he's essentially like a stando, right? So, he's a character, doesn't have HP, but he provides damage based on Jingyun's uh, presence in, in the fight. So, if... It, the talent speaks about it a little bit more, but it's a basically like a fourth character. It's just a, it's not just a right. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it seem like it's not a huge deal, but it's a huge deal. It's a reason why his kit's so specific, right? So we're talking farming. We're talking single target damage dealing. This is the man. This is the man that I'm gonna go for, because the this uh, this character and spoiler the next character have separate banners for when the game releases for 1.0. So. Uh, her, his ultimate deals lightning damage equal to, depending on the level, uh, to all enemies and increases the Lightning Lord's attack by three for the next turn. And just like, if you haven't seen it, I'll probably put out a video talking about the combat of the game and like the basics. But you could use ultimates at any time. You could wait two turns after Jing's, uh, you use his skill to utilize his ultimate. Or you can use his skill and then his ultimate immediately as long as you click it before the next action, action is taken by the next character. So, I'm not going to go into this. I'm not going to go into this laundry list of information that you see on the screen, or if you're looking at, I, I'm not sure where I'm editing at in this video. But basically, Prana Expirated, <laughs> I've educated, summons Lightning Lord at the beginning of battle. So you'll see him on your meter for like what characters are going when. Uh, Lightning Lord has a base speed of 60 and three base count as soon as you walk into the fight. Each count of the Lightning Lord's attack deals damage equal to, depending on the skill, a Jingyun's attack to a single enemy, and then it hits the adjacent enemies for 25% of the main target. Okay, so the max count that you can go to, so we talk about those two other abilities, his skill and his ultimate, uh, which gives you five if you do them both, is a max of 10. Every time Lightning Lord's attack count is increased by one, its speed goes up by 10. So we're talking like a lot of base characters have like 98 or 101. Sile uh, has a lot faster, but for ev so you start at 60. So it's not like it's not like after Jing Yun attacks the Lightning Lord attacks. So it acts like a metaphysical stand that just exists and throws out damage. After the action ends, it goes back to the base value, um, and it talks about it. When Jing Yun is knocked down, he will disappear, and if he's affected by crowd control, so if he's frozen, he won't be. You won't have access to the Lightning Lord. 
So his technique before getting into battle, um, Lightning Lord's attack count in the first increases by two at the start of the next battle. So jumping into battle, he starts at three. You pop this off, that's two. You use a skill, that's two more. And then you use the ultimate and he's almost at max. He should be at max. One of those two. I can't max. So um, the Lightning Lord acts as like this fourth character, which is really cool. And the animation for it is really awesome. And also, like I said, the aesthetic for me personally, I went from loving fire to loving thunder. So uh, his traces are if the Lightning Lord's attack count is greater than or equal to six, the crit damage is the crit damage is 20 percent for the next turn. I'm not too specific on what the crit rate for the Lightning Lord is, so I don't have, I don't know if I'm throwing out random facts of information, but I don't have access to that, but 20% crit damage, it might even be guaranteed, but I'm not sure, I never got him. Um, Jing Yun, a man with the plan, is another trace, was Jing Yun immediately regenerates 50% energy, energy at the beginning of the battle. Things like this are just, they're nice. You always want to see more damage, but the fact that the ultimate gives access to three uh, of the attack, it's it's well worth to have that energy recharge to be able to pop up that ultimate. And not to forget, it's not like his perspective is only the Lightning Lord. It's in addition to his single target and his uh, farming ability to AoE. After using a skill, crit rate is increased by 10% for two turns. This is his last one. Not a huge one. I think 10% is nice. Uh, you have, I think you have access to like 35, 37% total passively. Um, so huge, huge damage numbers is going to come out of him. Um, in terms of farming and AOE, he will be a single target beast because you're having that addition of that stand of the Lightning Lord coming out and, and attacking. I didn't, uh, I don't think that he's a character. Again, we talk about this. I'm going to talk about this every time a character comes out because you got two types of players. You got free to play and then you got whales. If you're like, oh, I'm a free-to-play player. What am I supposed to do? I don't have this. It's not a PvP game. There's no PvP that exists in the game. So do you need extra copies of the character to clear content? Absolutely not. As of right now, the content that exists in the game, there's never been anything that's lockjawed. Like, okay, this you have to do this thing for this one character. You have to get extra for this ability because if you don't, you're going to lose it. So, again, take it at your own will, but I don't think it's a character that you need to, A, get disappointed if you get copies of him. Because then you can level the ultimate and the skills to get more of that percentage up. But it's also not a thing like, oh, I need to keep something for the character to get more access to more. Again, just depends on who you are. That free-to-play or that pay-to-win. So without further ado, the last character that I'm going to be going for is Sila. Everyone on planet Honkai Star Rail <laughs> is talking about this character. I, if there's things I could put in perspective for you, if you're new to the YouTube or you're ever new to the stream... Is she fits the aesthetic of everything that I want. Kachin kind of opened up the door. I'm coming from a Genshin perspective, but Kachin opened up how I love like long haired purple thunder, but with that, like, I don't know, the best way to describe it is a peaceful aesthetic. So, butterfly, like, there's something about it that's not this, you know, like, a, the character could have, I'm sorry, Sila could have a crow or like a dragon, but a butterfly, and then there's like 80 of them. And she dashes around. It's like she used them as portals. It's like my mind starts going into crazy places. So the number one character that I'm going for is Sila. This is the character that I will break out Wallet Coon for regardless. Again, shout outs to the pity. Hopefully we don't hit the 50-50 pity on the second turn. We hit, we hit it on the first turn. But uh, again, this is like beating a dead horse. Everyone knows about her skills. But regardless, her thwack, single target damage. Her sheath blade deals quantum damage, uh, depending on the skill level of Sealus to a single enemy, and she gains 25% speed for two turns. If you're talking about a powwow team, her and Branya are Barry Allen. One's Barry, one's Allen. Together, they make lethal weapon. You know what I'm saying? Um, having access to more speed is what this character is built for. I haven't talked about the other two characters, but you obviously want to build her for speed. Uh, her ultimate, Seal enters a buff state and deals quantum damage. Uh, based on huge numbers to a single target enemy. Farming wise, she has access to doing a significant amount of damage to a single target enemy, and then I'll get to it in a second where she can she gets access to attacking another enemy. So not it's a weird farming because she could destroy one enemy, she could destroy the next enemy. You know, so just because it's not AOE doesn't take her away from like oh, I can't farm. Um, appear again is her talent. Uh, Asila enters the buff state upon defeating an enemy and receives an extra action 
while in the buff state seals damage increases by one turn enemies defeated and the action provided by reappearance will not trigger another reappearance so if she kills an enemy she gets access to another turn after she kills on a reappearance she won't get access to another one we're entering the realm of why her and Branya are like besties when i i got sila after i got Branya, and boy was it nice the laps I was doing was crazy, especially after I got my Bronya to 121 speed. Chef's guess. So her technique before getting into battle, after using her technique, seal gain stealth for 20 seconds. So that's before you get into the fight, so you can activate it, and then it doesn't need to be within the 5 seconds, but nor is it infinite. While stealth is active, Sile cannot be detected by enemies. When she attacks enemies to trigger combat, Sile will immediately enter the buffed state. So, when we're... A, it looks incredibly cool because her attack animation changes as well. She jumps in the air and slashes down. Also, did we even mention scythes? Oh, shoot. Oh, anyway, I'm going to keep getting gassed up. This is why I'm a little bit more appropriate for Twitch streams. I'm still trying to put my foothold into a YouTube content creation. And, I mean, my mannerisms and all that just fit like live reaction rather than it does, you know, paying attention. So, uh, Sila's traces, uh, when she's 50%, when she's at 50% or lower, reduces the chance of being attacked by enemies. I don't this isn't going to help her with those AoE attacks. However, when she's about to die, you at least have the nicety of knowing that she, there's a chance that she won't be targeted, right? Cuz you don't want her to pass away. You want her to keep that momentum and that speed going uh to possibly break the enemy. Um uh, rippling waves after using a basic attack, Sila's next action will be advanced for 20% after her basic attack she's going forward 20 percent. i mean with her i'm just saying with her and branya it just felt like i was doing laps it felt like sile got three turns before the enemy could go and while in the buff state sile's quantum resistance penetration increases by 20 percent. this game has a difficulty if you're using the wrong elements with the wrong weaknesses, you know what I mean? So if I'm using a quantum character during a combat with characters that aren't affected by quantum, Sila can somewhat survive, but it, you still need that support, that healer to be able to keep her afloat. Um, however, she's the character that I'm going for the most. I don't recommend re-rolling. I talked about it at the beginning of the video, but I'm not going to find myself re-rolling for this game. I say that I'm going to, and of course on stream, it's hype, you're getting excited, everyone's pumped. I think I'm just going to keep the first account that I get, just so I can just dive deep and start going into it, because I already know that I'm going to spend a little bit of money on it. But again, even coming from someone who's saying they're willing to spend money on the game, if you're watching this, because you've watched 80 other videos, and I'm at the very bottom, regardless, understand that there's no PvP in this game. And the reason why I bring up PvP for a game in terms of spending money is because you're spending money because you want something or because you think you get something, maybe because you have that sunken cost fallacy, but there's nothing to compete with, right? Like there may be leaderboards down the road. There may be, but there's just no reason aside from personal progression. So slow and steady wins the race in my personal opinion. If anyone's going to spend money, it's going to be me because I'm trying to make content creation a career. And this is how you go for it. I'm ranting because that's what I do. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like, maybe even subscribe. Check us out on Twitch when we go live. If this video did help you, leave me in the comment below what character that you're going for. Uh, and look forward to more Honkai Star Rail content. And remember, you are valued and you are appreciated. And before I... Uh, yeah.